my, my heroes were Da Vinci and, you know, the great painters and the sculptors. And, and as far as voice people go, they were Mel Blanc, Gene Ferre, Don Messick, Dawes Butler. All of them were so uh, unbelievable to me. I couldn't believe that they actually existed. You know, they only lived in this world. And, uh, and then, if you're lucky enough, later on in life, you get to meet some of them. And, and it's so funny, I, I was shaking when I, met one, when I met Mel Blanc, and I was like, I said, this is ridiculous, I don't have any kind of physical problems, and I can't even hold a pen in my hand, <laughs> you know. And uh, he signed something for me, I went to see a, a lecture that he did, a voice and slideshow at an old uh, university in Worcester, and at the end of it he said, so if anybody wants any autographs, uh, you want to make a line over here, and, uh, and I burst out of my seat like an uncontrollable wild rabid spastic dog and, and I was body slamming little kids and I was checking them like it was a hockey game get out of my little you little bastards and, and then Mel Blanc yelled at me yeah he yelled at me he said would you let the little kids go first, please? No. <laughs> but I did meet them and I was like, it was surreal. It was surreal. I mean, the things you think about when you meet somebody that you, you absolutely idolized. Um, I, he was sitting and I was standing up and I, I found myself looking down his ear. I said, I'm looking down Mel Blanc's ear. <laughs> I don't know, do you, ever, do you ever get weird abstract thoughts like that? Like you're only looking for periphery and that's good enough for you? Like, even that, it's cool. Um, because if I thought of all the voices that went down that ear and what inspired him and how it came out or how he percolated it or whatever,